you see in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through 7, that God himself is the one that made the waters. It says in Genesis 1, verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. So God is so powerful that he could move the waters. And he could move the waters to let the dry land appear. This is what you call omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. He's almighty. It says in verse 9 in Genesis 1, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. So God is so much more powerful than the waters. He's so much more powerful that he even gave them their name. In Genesis 1.10 it says, And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So he could create something so powerful. But yet he's much more powerful than his creation. And how could the creature be more powerful than the creator? Yet people are more afraid of a hurricane or a giant wave compared to Almighty God. Job 9.8 says, Which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea. So God could cause the perfect storm and then walk across it. In Psalms 89.9, it says, Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. So God has power to calm the storm he started. In Mark 4.41 it says, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Psalms 107.25 For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. Psalms 107.29 he maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Isaiah 51, 15. But I am the Lord thy God that divideth, divided the sea, who, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. So the Lord's roar is more intimidating than the waves of the sea. It says in Psalms 29, 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. So God's voice sounds like thunder and it sounds like water. Ezekiel 43, 2. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Revelation 1, 15. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Revelation 14, 2, And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. So God is so intimidating. If you saw him in person, you would fall down in front of him just like John did. He has the voice of many waters. And you know the story of Peter... Walking, on the, walking out on the water and Jesus walking on the water. Showing you that the Lord is so fearless, He's not even afraid of the raging waves of the sea. Matthew 14, 23 through 33 says, And when He had sent the multitudes away, He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, He was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them walking on the sea. So the Lord can walk on the waters. He's so much more powerful than his creation that he can just walk on water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. But Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately 
Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. So Peter may have lost faith and started sinking, but he's the only one with enough faith to get out of the ship to come to Jesus to start with. And when you're in a mess, repeat the same thing Peter did. Say, Lord, save me. That's a quick three-word prayer to send up. And you have 24-7 access to a God that's more powerful than the raging waves of the sea that made the sea, whose voice is so powerful that it sounds like the raging waves of the sea. And God is so in control of the creation that he's made that he can use other parts of his creation to control his creation in revelation 12 15 it says and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth so that's a prophecy of what's going to happen to israel is the devil's going to try to send a great flood to kill them and then the Lord's just going to open the earth the mouth of, in the earth and it's going to swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and that's what Jesus Christ did with death he swallowed it up in victory the devil had the power of death but that got swallowed up just like this great flood in Revelation 12 gets swallowed up so remember when you're in any trouble that you have 24-7 access to God Almighty.